Hey, what's up YouTube? Ronnie Sweet and Natural and in this tutorial I'll show you how you can easily get or retain highly natural and realistic skin texture in your images. If at all you have been editing your images using frequency separation and you are really getting those plastic and you don't love the results, this is a tutorial for you. And the image you're just going to be using today is taken by GMAX Studios. He is also a content crea creator and he creates content about photography and tutorials like I do on this channel. So I'm going to link him in the description of this video so that you can check him out. So what you have to understand before <coughs> even retouching images, you have to take into consideration that different images are taken using cameras that have different resolutions, different sensors, and they may be able to capture varying number of details in the photos. So when you take that into consideration, it means that the, when you're using frequency separation to edit images, you're going to be applying a different number of Gaussian blur depending on that varying number of skin details that was captured by those different cameras meaning we are not going to be applying the same amount of Gaussian blur to all the images if at all we just want to retain the natural and highly realistic skin texture so in this case I'm just going to, I'm not going to be using any actions I'm just going to come right here and I'm using Photoshop 2020 I'm going to create those two layers out of the background layer by hitting Ctrl Command J on the keyboard twice and I'm going to create those two layers and this is going to be low <coughs> and this is going to be the high layer so when I know some of you may be knowing what these layers comprise of and I'm just going to be telling you what these comprise of if I told you a beginner out there so the low frequency layer is going to be containing our colors and the details in the image <coughs> are going to be in the high frequency layer so that is what you have to take into consideration meaning when we are blurring out or removing the color from this image we are just going to blur and take the radius up and when we are losing out on the details meaning we are just going to be eliminating the colors from the high frequency layer to only retain the textures and that is it so we are just going to be doing that and I don't want to use any action because I just want you to understand this very important step that I'm going to show you so we come to the high frequency layer and we turn it off by clicking or hiding the visibility and selecting the low frequency layer so when you select the low frequency layer you just come to filter blind come to Gaussian blur so this is the most important step if at all you want to retain the best amount of detail so always make sure that when it opens this Gaussian blur window the preview window or the preview option is checked on so you have to use these options to either zoom in or zoom out and now we click to move and see the area that has more or prominent details in the image and for this case this nose area has more details than the rest of the face so when we spot that area it is going to be like a reference point for blurring out the details out of the image meaning when you start losing out on the details in this area it means the other details in the image will have been completely lost out so just simply left click and move this so you have to stop at the point when the details are just starting to get lost completely from the image so Simply left click and move towards the right hand side just like that and just move it a little bit more. So you have to stop at, the, at that point when the details are just starting to get lost. And like I said, you shouldn't cram this figure or this radius because your images may be having differing details in the image and different levels of sharpness because they may be have taken or they may have been taken using a different camera and those cameras may be differing from the one that was used to take this image so the radius sh shouldn't be crammed in this case and after doing that just come and hit ok so when you hit ok you can see that it is going to make the overall image look blurry and lose out on the details but when you come to the high frequency layer and turn it on you are going to get back the details so we only want to remain with the details or the textures in the image meaning we have to eliminate the colors from this high frequency layer so you're basically going to come to image and come down to apply image so when you come to apply image you're just going to come and select the low frequency layer from which you're just going to be subtracting our details 
So make sure I channel is RGB. And since I have a 16-bit image, it means I'm just going to basically change the blend mode to add. And opacity at 100, the scale is 2 offset 0. Make sure I preserve transparency and mask cannot check. And for a 16-bit image, if I thought you have 16, make sure you tick this option and you can see that this gets the textures or the details on this gray kind of layer. I'm sorry it is raining outside. I'm just trying to be as loud as possible in this tutorial. Then if at all you're having an 8-bit image right here, just come and make sure that you change the blending mode to subtract and the invert is not going to be turned on and the scale has to be to offset 128 and make sure opacity at 100%. Preserve transparency and mask cannot check and you can come and hit OK. But I have a 16-bit image. I'm just going to turn that to add. The scale is to offset 0 and turn on the invert option and hit OK. So after that, come and change the blend mode to linear light. So I'm just going to come and turn it to linear light and you can see I've gotten back the image the way it is meant to look. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come right here. If at all you wish, you can group these layers by selecting both and dragging them to this folder icon to put them in a group. So I'm just going to come to the low frequency layer. Remember when I'm doing skin retouching, we are usually mixing more or working more on the low frequency layer and we only work on the high frequency layer when we are eliminating the acne or the skin imperfections or the freckles if at all you're eliminating those. So just come to the low frequency layer and select it. Then you're going to come to the mixer brush tool. So right click under the brushes and get what is known as the mixer brush tool. So when you get the mixer brush tool, make sure it is a clean brush and make sure this option is checked because we don't want to drag color from one area to another. The weight is going to be 9, load 75, mix at 90 and the flow at 100%. Make sure sample areas is not checked because we only want to work in the information in the low frequency layer and simply left click and start painting. But the trick I tend to use is I turn off the high frequency layer so that I can see the uneven skin tone inconsistencies and I start left clicking and painting and the more plastic the image tends to look on this step it means I'm going to be retaining the texture in the image at the end of the retouching process so just left click and move and drag your mixer brush tool and you can see that this is really making the image plastic so if at all you really don't trust this you can create a black and white layer on top of the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer and you can use it as a hope or guide layer for the areas that you have to even out and blend in the image so i'm just going to blend these areas so i'm basically mixing the colors that are looking alike and where those colors are transitioning to a different color i'm basically blending or mixing or painting through that border by simply left clicking and moving around like that you can see that this is really doing a pretty nice job so like i said the more plastic the image tends to look the better the results you're going to be having at the end of this process so just come and paint through just like that and when you turn on the texture layer or our high frequency layer you can see the before and after we still have the original skin textures in this image meaning we are achieving our results so i'm just going to turn this off and just come and continue blending these details and you can see we are now getting to have the original details within the image by simply painting using a mixer brush tool. So oftentimes what I tend to do after using the mixer brush tool to blend or even out the skin uh, details or the skin color so and I have even transitions within the skin color I tend to incorporate a second technique that is known as the lasso tool technique. So I'm just going to turn this off and you can see before and after we still have the original skin textures in this image. So what I tend to do I select the low frequency layer and fine tune the areas I may have missed out when I was using the mixer brush tool. So I tend to come and select the lasso tool. The feather is 22 pixels and make sure new selection mode is active. And now I come and I refine. So I'm just going to make a selection and how I make these selections, I follow the way the shape is, the shape of a face is moving. And after making that selection, I come to filter blur and they come back to gush and blur and this is more of a fine tuning step so this is the radius that we had initially 
when we are separating the frequencies of the image so just move that radius towards the right hand side up to a point when you feel like you have the base out of your image so at around 21 we are good to go but usually i have a hack that i tend to use and that is remember we had seven i might apply that radius by three and i type in the value so seven by three is 21 i'm just going to type in 21 and that will be getting us somewhere or a good spot and simply hit ok so i'm just going to apply that onto the rest of the image to fine tune or make it better and work on the areas i may have missed out when i was using the mr brush tool to even out the skin tone transition so basically this is how you can retain natural and highly realistic skin details in your images and if at all you have found this helpful you can see and can go ahead and work on the rest or the overall image. So this is it for this one. And if at all you have found this helpful, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe. If at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed to this channel, you can see the before and after. Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in yet more amazing shows. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.